Flight Earth British, Martin Lietke speaking. Hi guys, welcome back to the Great Flight Earth British Think Tank for some more think tanking and today we're going to be thinking about comets. Comets and their effect on history and humanity. Um, I'm going to show you a document from basically the old world, fascinating document, swears that it's true, would tell you of fiery swords and coffins and pyramids falling from the sky. And the book's called um, Strange Atmospheric Phenomena. Now, isn't it incredible the word phenomena is, first bit is almost Phoenician, uh, except the um, menema bit at the end. Phenomena is almost Phoenician. So, this came to my Instagram this morning, absolutely fascinated me. So I thought I would share it, and this is what's led me along this road of inquiry. Actually, I was looking into comets before I seen this, so I thought actually perfect, bring it up. Now this, um, I don't know where this exactly is, but it was shared on my Instagram, and you wanna forget about any helocentric nonsense because this is not orbiting anything, if it is a comet, or if it is a shooting star, I don't know what to think, but let's take a look. So, Watch out again. So it does a little turn. And this is not far off the roofs. And this touches down. What do you think that could be? Could that be interpreted in the Middle Ages as a fiery sword? Oh, well, to my mind, the printers of this, uh, of this book, um, they have the knowledge for language and they have the intellect. I think they could probably interpret something like um, a co difference between a comet um, and what they're describing coming from the sky. But look how close this is to, ph to Phoenician, except the meaning there. So I think it's a clue because what do we think about the Phoenicians? They're in the clouds, with the information's in the water. But check this narrative out and I think a few, I think a few, uh, pennies will drop. So this is a true and wonderful narrative of two entire particular phenomena which were seen in the sky in Germany. Uh, the last has happened near Riga, uh, seaport town in Lovinia, where a multitude of people have seen the sky open and coffins, fiery rods, three dead heads, a serpent and a pyramid. Uh, the second was in Kirksburg in Germany, miles away from the city of Elbing and 10 miles from the city of Danzig where on the 6th till the 7th of May 1763, these phenomena stood for 48 hours without vermin, lightning and thunderclaps, which more in particular is to be seen in following cuts. So that's just your sample. So we're going to have a little look at this. It gives you some images. I've seen some images like this before, um, which I'll show you a few of um, on my Comet images, because I was looking over my Tatarian uh, think tank channel, uh, Celtic Tatarian channel, actually, this morning. And I've been talking about comets since 2016 on my channel. So anyway, this is supposed to be true. Uh, the True, see in big letters, a wonderful narrative of two entirely different phenomena. So, coming from the sky, fiery swords. So the first happened near Riga, seaport town in Lavinia which is Latvia today, where a multitude of people seen the sky open and a coffin, fiery rods and dead heads and serpents and a pyramid. So how can we interpret that? Um, you know, these people got print together the language, um, maybe, you know, post mud flood survivors, Mad Max days, whatever, but I think they could probably interpret things in the sky, guys. You know, I think they've actually seen something that looks like these things. A pyramid is pretty distinctive. It's got sharp sides. The second was in Kirksburg, Germany, miles from the city of Albing, uh, 10 miles from the German city of Danzig. Anyway, okay. Where the 6th and the 7th of May 1763, these phenomena stood for 48 hours with vermin, lightning and thunderclaps, uh, which were more particular to be seen in the following cut. So I'm guessing they're on about this picture. Okay. So we have cannons, lightning, swords, pyramid serpents, and it's supposed to have looked like that. Now, imagine in reset times, if that was to happen, guys, that the Phoenicians actually enter like that, just like the depictions in the Renaissance art and all of the decoding actually suggests. Wouldn't that be freaky? Anyway, 
we hear with great astonishment that near Riga in Lavinia um, has been seen up in the sky fiery rods um, that struck about it and the points of a rod were full of blood. Four great swords stood in the starry heaven which ve stood so not moving which were very often vanished and soon to appear again mm. uh, they did strike together like flashes of fire round a house uh, which was frightful to behold excuse me the next bit is erased but i'll get on a bit and um, one was pretty large coughing a coughing guys uh, which during the time when this was seen uh, completely stood with lightning and thunderclaps so a coffin standing up with lightning and thunderclaps hmm. um, after which a youth appeared who was clothed in white and spoke the following so this is like um, reminiscent of our children of oh, Fatima in Portugal witnessed by 10,000 people similar sort of uh, things anyway I tell you the significance of this. These are forebodings of the Creator, which go before the punishment. Christ, for often thy heart. Uh, deceit from sin. I think that is, because the S is at F is. Uh, the killing sword of, of the eternity. Dare not sooner rest to the half of God and thy friend, thy will fall upon thy fall upon thy knees, and thou shalt see how wonderful God will deliver thee. Those will trust who trust the Lord shall have new strength. Therefore, put thy reliance in Him. Uh, it is who procedures help um, to contain the enemies. Mm. Let there be over so many and shall not be succeeded. So loads of enemies and they can't be succeeded. God keeps them within their bounds. The hourglass which shrews itself signifies the time of thy life which goes to the end. So that is what the person said. So that's pretty foreboding and apocalyptic. But this is a narrative, I guess, for um, what seems like heavenly characters, maybe UFOs or some sort of visitation happening and loads of people dying and stuff. Anyway, end. A witch uh, agreeable to thy creator will is most run out. Take care this time and you will not buy it again. Excuse me, what is that? For the conclusion is soon made. The rod signifies how God will punish the world who is offended. Oh, it's their interpretation of these fiery objects. And reproaches you. Hold still is the... Uh, whew, don't know what that is. The swords are sharpened and they will destroy the world. If God does not... Uh, Preserve it. Ah, what hard times does our land feel? The enemies prepare themselves. Hold him with thy hand. Lord, have compassion. See the forsaken, the poor who does cry unto thee. Help them or they are un. Done. So that's pretty foreboding and apocalyptic, isn't it? I don't know if the church grabbed hold of the narrative and done their interpretation of these freaky things in the sky. But anyway, it's all true. Let's have a look at the second narrative. This is a bit weird too. Um, another phenomenon uh, which stood over Kirksburg in Poland. Uh, wake to the drowning of the drowsy. Awake to drowsy Christendom stood on the sleep of sin. And the Lord's day is not far off, as world announces. We perceive without intermission the frightful wonders everywhere. Mm -hmm. And largely has been in Poland. So these are happening all over by the sounds of them. Uh, as well known city of Kirchberg, where God, though is great in his omnipotence, has shrewed such four ridings today and two nights as you will hear further 
Okay, on the 6th of uh, May, um, they were seen and heard just at the clock struck 2 in the afternoon at a sky with thunder and lightning, which lasted without intermission till late in the night. And the heavens opened itself very wide uh, to hear marvellous things. Three angels were seen in the clouds uh, who sung delightful and the sky turned clear again the fiery sun and the rod um, and the great cannon appeared uh, the clouds turned red with fire and the winds did blow whoa whoa did the three angels cry oh people leave your pride vice so wow is what i can say to that just wow anyway let's see how this tale ends see if anything happy comes of it all so vice so this is down to the sin we're getting blamed for all about bad things but there's a lot of good people haven't done anything wrong they're going to get sort of messed up in this isn't there so unrighteousness repent oh germany mm, might be a narrative against them i'm not sure land to the northwest god will punish you very quick um hang on let's just stop now, i've got a narrative for the test of a weapon um, around this time and we talk about fascists electromagnetic weapons and uh, altering weather and we talk about all sorts of stuff on flight of british what if this is a sort of threat that they have some incredible weapon that harnesses from the sky and causes all of this uh, all of this carnage it's not interesting it's a bit of a threat uh, a sword will be seen in the sky and some stars and some crosses oh people consider this people repent the winds did blow very hard from the evening till the morning oh lovely christ what happened to our mystery many houses were blown down men women and children were killed uh, likewise was heard in the clouds a clear sound burying ground a clear sound excuse me three angels descended from heaven and seated themselves in the burying ground um yeah that is cemetery then is it uh what i could tell from these frightful tidings is true uh and such great wonders in the city did happen and the church door did open itself and the steeples uh, did shake and the ministries and the magistrates were often were have seen this themselves and considered it so even the hierarchy and the establishment have seen this and, and considered it as well so it's not just the people wow so come O lord to the day of judgment and redeem us help us from our necessity and plague deliver us from evil help us out of our affliction uh, give us after their grievous times the eternal life amen okay so basically this narrative is from um like the 1600s early though and it's basically um telling you of strange atmospheric events um which are open to interpretation but that is crazy isn't it guys so very big phoenician theme on that even the phenomena bit and angels guys what do they mean by angels and these angels you know sounds and trumpets we keep getting this through the artworks and i'll show you some examples these are comets in my comic collection and this is from um, an old comic book comet book not comic book that i've presented many many times and it shows swords in the sky like that so are they just interpreting a fiery ball with a long tail as a sword well what about the rod so this looks you know 100 percent man-made it's in the cloud again falls from the sky rod from god type thing and these people are praying what about this one again your clouds what could it be a star in the sky well, i'm not sure about them hope they don't turn up anyway and some alchemical symbols which let's have a look at the date on that which are all encoded and tell us pretty much the same j577 j577 on that uh, but you get the comet always a player if you follow the melancholy code so um, I've posted maybe four or five times now, repetitively in the past, concerning epidemics um, and the changes in atmosphere caused by 
electromagnetic agitation of something on the way, something putting his foot in the door, like a comet. And here is an old depiction of people, which seem like giants because of the size of cows, but you can't be sure. It's maybe just a perspective thing. Um, but they are all rolling around and dying um, because of the stuff that's falling out of the sky and all of civilization is getting smashed. Right, lightning, because it's plasma. And I've posted endless amounts of these depictions from J007, whatever year that is. And if you were around in the 1700s, you would have actually get paid if you could have spotted a comet early. Because this is, as far as I know, the comet of 1812. That was split into two. One of it helped cause liquefaction and the New Madrid event of 18. 11 to 1812 and the rest went what was called Napoleon's Comet over Europe freezing it up killing most of Napoleon's army and population of whatever happened to um, Moscow so here's another one of these German images it thinks this is a different uh, a different narrative or maybe Kirksburg actually um, all of these orbs and things turning up in the sky so UFOs you know, I'm a flat earther, but I don't like dispute aliens because I can't. Not in my life. There's no way in a million years I can do that. So, um, what are they? Phoenicians? Or water? In submarines? Or just from places outside of here? Look how close this comes to this skyscraper civilization and it's all just falling over. The towers are just liquefying as this thing just sparks way, way too close, guys. These things come close this happens the building blows up lightning hits kills everyone plasma discharge events caused by agitation of EM and a comet zipping through and here's an ancient uh, depiction of the place where we live and it's domed but they named different comets that come in and reset the place Crininius Baritius and this one here they had names for the comets the reset now, you know, in the official narrative, Halley's Comet, you know, we like to analyse it, we can tell it's Halley's Comet. Hasn't got like a massive sign on the side that says Halley's Comet, guys. These are just orbs or comets. Say orbs because that's what they show us in the depiction. So look at this, all in the clouds again. Phoenician heads, a shitload of weapons and swords because they are weapons. Behold. The resetter. I think we should get it on. Comets are shown to wreck the place. So there's a Dura engraving with the sands of time ticking away. Maybe this will make sense of the Tower of Babel. I think this is something to do with sound technology more than any other because they look like massive speakers on the side and on the Bay of Tapestry 1066 Norman Conquest Battle of Hastings and apparently Halley's Comet they say an official narrative makes a show because it says Halley's Comet doesn't it no it doesn't that's right it doesn't so they just say whatever the German Tom again can you imagine seeing that in the sky there's been stacks of unusual phenomena guys what about that thing I just showed you how would you explain that any science to explain it? What is it exactly? It just took a U-bend and landed in someone's garden, a big fiery ball. And we keep talking about bolt lightning and ball lightning a lot on this channel. From my family's experiences with ball lightning. What about these? Could they be orbiting, going around like snakes? And some ancient depictions here of comets going in different directions, resetting civilization. Okay. And that's it after I take it. That looks completely mud flooded. People with hands in the air. Oh shit, look at this. Comets. Could be the vibration causing it from a liquefaction, causing a resonance through the plane. Comet stones. That one. So they come that close. I can remember Hale Bop. Highly interesting comet. I never stop thinking about it actually since I seen it. It was just that magnificent. But that could have been just some sort of inert test comet or something. Because uh, it didn't do that much. But it might have done. It might have done something to consciousness. How do we know? So, yeah, back to the 700s. Yeah, you would be paid a lot of money for spotting a comet, guys. It was all about watching the sky and 
you know the Vatican they got a telescope called Lucifer and they constantly watch the sky and it's all about what happens in the sky look how close this is it's actually illuminating the building here sorry that is not connected but it's death cult in Quoxy cattle and you can see a whole pyramid made of skulls and they're doing that you know ripping your guts out bit thing that they do so. comets we spotted one look at that one that looks very beetle-esque and what does a comet bring cheap labor why will it be cheap because everyone's dead <laughs> funny how they uh, put the narrative concerning uh, cheap labor and a comet together don't you think no coinky dink and this is the comet of 1811 that I spoke of that caused I think the new Madrid event because at the same time and pestilence I suppose a mass die off they would have you know just blame it on oh let's have a think cholera potato famine take your pick in the official narrative what really happened atmospheric changes caused by something coming like a comet we know there was a reset at this period we know a lot of people died I'm not going to mention the current times guys but it doesn't take a genius to work out how much shit we are in right now we had the summer to crack it what happened now it's going to be winter yeah something needs to happen and quick because the clock is ticking away in a accelerating pace okay guys they have like we've won they haven't fucked off yet and the you know the change hasn't taken place is what i'm trying to say it needs to get it on already weapons okay there's an acumen that close okay 1744 this was regarded as the great comet maybe a uh, barrier oh there's an unusual image satan in a chair being given a bottle of wine and oh dear bit of ass kissing going on but they you know the demonic types do require things like that don't they so and some idols from the antique world it's apparently existing and living so you've got the Janus types both the multi hands the Krishnas and you've got the people who live in the sea that come up which can be interpreted as Phoenicians here's another comic going over France Paris and you get them on coins too so they've been around and depicted Changing the course of human history. This guy's not bugged. Everyone else is freaking out. What the fuck? How close it is, you know? And he's like, he just knows. And he's just got that smile on his face. Because he's aware. Like, if you've seen a comic, you'd know. Sorry, they're really smart images. But rocks and hail and, hail and brimstone. Fire and rocks falling from the sky. As well. Let's bring in disease and pestilence now I've got a few books I'll share one of them with you now okay this is supposed to be some of them comments I'll share some where are some of this book with you now but look at that 1531 so this is a bit similar to that narrative from that book and it's not actually that book is it that is incredible so Holographic sky armies, guys. And they're in the Marabarata. Uh, holo holographics are a thing. So there will be a thing in the future tech or the Phoenician tech. That's in the clouds, that is. Some guy with a fiery sword fighting an army. Wow, that is creaky as anything. Let's have a look at this one. Phoenicians in the clouds, obviously. Buildings falling down, everyone dropping down dead with plague. And a lion eating this guy, chewing his head. Maybe just licking him. Maybe I'm just, you know, reading into it too wrong. Imagine seeing the sky like that. So, yeah, human cannibal. Good idea, Zazel. I'd have a go, though, for a laugh. Whatever. Don't really care. 1811, there it is again. 15th of October. And I was in over Britain, in, near Winchester. So, same comet that went over America, but it split in two. It went two different directions. So it wasn't orbiting anything. As you can see. Right the way through history. 
Comitage. Right then, gonna move on. Um, also, you get a lot of these, which could be interpreted as craft, but they could equally be submarines or whatever, Phoenician tech. That's 1811, Comet von 1811, so Germany uh, depicted it as well. So there's a definite correlation between atmospheric changes and illness. And this book here is illustrations atmospheric origin of epidemic disorders, health, and its relation to presponent co uh, constitutional causes. So what it goes into is comets and everything else, but it gives you medicines. Now I was reading through it last night. I thought this was absolutely, you know, it's quite telling. You know, it's a little way in to what's going on now. For the solution of this question would necessarily have the influence of laws respecting quarantine. All I can say on this subject is that in general, the notion of epidemics are propagated by infection seems to be to be totally without foundation. Oh dear, well they just locked the whole of humanity down on that uh, doubt. <laughs> While certain sorts of them uh, through excited by the state of air on the predisposed constitutions are evidently capable of being propagated by inoculation and the contact of disordered parts and have not entered into the inquiry of political regulations may be necessary to avoid contagion so um it goes into quite some detail concerning epidemic guys and he's not going with um quarantine being a good thing at all which we all you know, disagree with by now but yeah it goes into comets it's um a fantastic book and it gives you some health things as well you know diet regularity simple medicines and this sort of thing Health is perpetually influenced by atmospherical causes. Did they tell you that in school? Did the doctors tell you that? Is it a reality? Well, there's a whole load of books saying that it is, guys. I I'm just thinking it might be. The health of other animals are affected by atmospheric causes. Okay. Uh, particularities of atmosphere affect the life of plants. And atmospherical influence seems to be many causes of obvious periodical. So, um... And the trees and plants have been really flourishing this year. I wonder if it's because of atmospheric changes. Uh, nature exhibits itself in periodical phenomena. Oh, does it now? Like what happened this year? The periods of many diseases are a result of one another. Uh, there is many diseases, the dual periodical and symptoms of which um, an allergy which might be supposed to be atmospherical so anyway it goes on it goes on contagious diseases differ essentially from epidemics by both influenced by atmospherical causes so plague and other pestilence fevers known to originate from atmospherical causes something in the air and they may be cash cow in it and hijacking something that happens completely naturally from changes of atmosphere because of this you know, the mechanism for this place is what that book screams out at me. Anyway, we're moving on. So um, they've got different ideas of what goes on in the sky. You know, you see this disc quite a bit. Let's have a look at a few more. Let's have a look at some of these. Excuse me. Ugh. But um, the UFO sort of idea, isn't it? You know. Oh, pictures disappeared. What's going on there? Huh? Excuse me. That's really weird. So, um, atmospheric phenomena, right, has been spotted by balloons. There's some incredible ones in this, guys. Okay, so we get sun halos. Okay, well, we get them. 1855. This is a capture of two of the four angels, isn't it? The magnetics are drawing the light. So we get that. So, these drop in multiple. Meteors, but what about this? This was witnessed in Paris in 1869. And what was witnessed was an entire copy of the city reflected in the sky upside down. And I got other evidence of this happening all over the place. I've got a book over there where somebody literally took a photograph of Bristol reflected in the sky, but it was in Alaska. How can this be? So yeah, the reflection of Paris reflected upside down like a mirror in the sky. So that is a known atmospheric phenomena and well refraction <laughs> which is something the flat earthers truly do know about is refraction 
about this phenomena atmospheric pyramid thing going on with this light so these have been documented three spheres in the sky the star in the atmosphere so that's a bit like uh, what Constantine must have witnessed so I'm guessing these have been witnessed by balloons uh, something there a bit like a Foo Fighter okay and look at this if you stand on top of there you reflect it like a giant in the sky is an Afriki. So there's another atmospheric thing that we know nothing about. Weird. Weird, 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 weird. So, freaky atmospheric phenomena, phenomena, how little we know. What have you seen that in the sky? How do you think it got there? Things going on. What that? See, it seems to be a lot we don't know about this place, guys. <laughs> Especially when it comes to the sky. So a lot of people thinking, is you know, is this what's happening? Is there something definitely bigger coming? Because everyone's getting a sort of sensation and a feeling that there's something big coming. I'm not, you know, going to argue with that, guys. I'm definitely feeling the same myself. Look at Jesus, giant Jesus, sitting on a rainbow. Oh, the Queen's favourite symbol for the plague. Um, and standing on a ball, which looks just like a comet. He's blowing sound and it's causing vibration and everyone is sinking into the mud. Hence, mud flood. Because of liquefaction caused through sound, sound is vibration. I don't think it'll actually be like a trumpet, but it will be a vibrational quality. See? Mud flood. And I don't know why they haven't got no clothes on. Phoenicians require them naked for some reason, or maybe it's just hot. What about that? Looks like a little Vimana going on. And this thing, but it's a bit rudimentary with the propellers, but it was witnessed over, I think, Chicago back in the day. It's been a few over Hollywood as well, as you know, the Battle of Hollywood. Anyway, Battle of LA. So we're moving on. Anyway, now I'm going to show you a little bit of footage here. This is the San Francisco earthquake. It's a new bit of footage. I had this linked to me on another movie, which I'm going to show you shortly, um, which is fantastic, by the way. Um, refugees of Jefferson Square, and it's a refugee camp, 1906 after the San Francisco events but what it does show you is soldiers and stuff so maybe there is a bit of volume on it I'll remove my microphone and I'll be back shortly thank you No, there's no volume on that. Anyway, so it's a FEMA camp set up. They had maybe, I don't know, I've seen up to 80 odd of these FEMA camps set up in San Francisco. So they come here straight away with a tent, but everyone's immaculately turned out living in, you know, relative squalor in a tent. People are usually smelly, aren't they? We've all been to Glastonbury, or maybe not, festivals. So you get the army with rifles. They don't seem too much prisoners, but there's the army there, American doughboy, blowing his nose, you get shot for that in this day and age, mate, it won't blow your nose, fuck you know. So yeah, an epidemic of bubonic plague broke out a year after this, these camps were set up some time while they amazingly built and rebuilt the entire city and a great exposition, Pan Pacific Exposition, all in the period of nine years, whilst living in tents. I'm being sarcastic, it's impossible, something else is clearly going on. So, oh, FEMA campage. So, yeah, it feels like the infrastructure's in place for whatever's coming. And they are definitely gone crazy, accelerating the lockdowns. I mean, I can, we can't leave our city, the north of England, Manchester, not allowed to leave the city. London's gone on crazy lockdown. So you're not allowed to, like, really visit your relatives or anything, but, you know, you're allowed to go to the shops. So if you want to see your relative, you have to be crafty, meet them down the shops, maybe talk outside, but not for long. Okay, because good things are in short supply these days. So yeah, they come completely nuts, which um, screams if they do a second lockdown that they're not giving a fuck about the economy because it's not going to matter anymore. So in my mind, they're closing up shop for the winter. There's definitely something else afoot, guys. Okay, and it ain't about no goddamn virus that they're marketing. If ask any person if you if you know every year like the same amount of people die if they want to lose all their business and all their life for seven people that have just died of the 
cold in some country because it's not going to happen guys this is the way of nature not something harsh or anything but fuck so little old Liel so I'm going to show you some um, vintage photographs of Lil but I'm I'm guessing this is the photographer's date of birth, 1814 to 1875. He was a bit young if he died. Um, but the photographs are certainly of 1875. Okay, so very early of Lille in France. And it shows that the city's been like ransacked. And I'm guessing this is the Franco Russian War, Franco Prussian War. But check this out, guys. It's all wood at the bottom, red flutter. Let's work our way up. So the bottom bit's wood and is okay, but the windows are gone. It's like something's come through the window. But what about these? All bricked up. Check this check the ornamentation. Recognize anyone? Wow. Such a fantastic building. Let's have a little look further up. Right. Windows open there. And the roof is gone. The roof is gone from the fire. So it's been gutted by fire. But check that out for quality on the corner. So could have been just a burning building. The rest look uh, okay. And not a war at all. But well, that's fantastic. Let's have a look at some more of these. Oh, excuse me. That'll be alright. Oh, that's another image. Uh, some more of these little. I, I've jumped a couple, but there are stacks in here, and I won't be able to go through more because of the time factor. Uh, it's half past seven now, UK time. I want this up for later. So let's have a look at this building. Oh no, this is this is a war. This has got to be the Franco Prussian because the entire block is gone. So have a look. So whatever was coating this is gone. Wow. All bricked up windows. Must have been something to do with the window tax. Wow, look at them. They're new, aren't they? New Phoenician. Well, not new. I haven't seen that style before, I mean. Mm. Calicots. So, a lovely wooden shop frontage going on. Horse and cart. Boy, man, that's all that's going on there. Eh? Monocani, that doesn't sound very French, Monocani, well I guess it does, oh no, alright then, we'll give him that, okay, excuse me, let's have a look at another couple, I would link these up below if you're thinking, oh he's gone a bit quick, I would like to have spent more time on that, you can, I will link all of this up, uh, you've got to be able to turn the pictures, so no, no, no uh, disruptions here, look at these railings, right, let's have a look, he's looking at the camera, Wow, check it out. Poof. It's all about overboard on the old statues. Fair you go up as always. Wow. The more mega the statues. Always with the flowing vegetation, whatever they are. I feel that they're rhododendrons or something. I can't even identify them. We haven't been over to. They're just like garlands, you know, the Hawaiians put it around your neck when you arrive and rub noses with you when you arrive in Honolulu. I hope that's a reality. I'm very shocked if it's not. Reality's endlessly disappointing anyway. Ugh. That's in Australia. Okay, let's have a look. No windows, no windows, no windows. The red brick may be a bit more recent, don't know. Because it looks a bit shabby up here compared to the facade, which is fantastic, wouldn't you say? The people, he's got the same jacket going on as him, and the same hat going on, really. Bit of a uniform, a bit like the Mexicans get. Same corner, same photo. Let's move on. Oh, damn, that keeps happening. Don't worry. Anyway, let's have a look at this image. Hi, son. You okay there? Here with my son, Welsh Dragon Metals, a link in below. Makes jewellery and gold things and alchemy, really. He's a metal metallurgist. So, look at that. Beautiful theatre. 
was playing. I'm not so sure what. Okay, okay. So, FEB Extra, please uh, feel free to share this out, guys. Just coming in to keep the juice flowing each. And keep busy, because lockdown sucks, man. Sucks bad. Alright. Still, good for research. <laughs> anyway, it's always a bright side. So, there, a bit of carnage going down here. Things still on fire, so war each going on. Has to be the Frank oppression. Well, I can't imagine what other war was going on around that time in France. And the Opera House you just witnessed took a bit of a paste in, so look underneath it. So, what happened? Let's have a look. So, did a cannon come in? go through the window and explode the inside why is the outside absolutely smashing and the interior gone maybe they're just sporadic fires in the area who knows who knows so a lot of these buildings get destroyed as we already know so let's move on a little bit because I've got to get through some this is not going to be the longest vlog in history because I need to get on let's have a look that's in Australia okay let's have a look at this um, hmm. nice little fire engine, Some hoses, and that building's going up as well. Hmm, this city's in terrible trouble lately, isn't it? Everything's going up. Well, not lately, whenever that year was. Oh, let's have a look in there. Bricked up, bricked up. It's a theatre. Bricked up, bricked up, bricked up. Repurposed, arch bricked up, bricked up. What were they originally? What were these originally? Pre reset. Hmm. Quite a good one. Right. Oh, yeah. I feel for sure this is the Franco Prussian. 1870, yes. Okay, now we've established. We bombed Paris. We bombed Lille. We bombed. Uh, hmm. Another one I just can't remember. Greg on Mano Arch. Strasbourg got demolished as well. This is what I was thinking of. So a nice little bandstand with the Antiquitec thing on top. Can't imagine what that was for in the past. But yeah, whatever's happened, cannons have reduced everything to tiny little bricks and bricklets the size of conkers that's a bit weird isn't it but what does that maybe they just got big howitzers in 1871 so there's that bandstand check the antiquitec out on top it's like a circle and then you have that weird little dormer thing on top the bandstand itself and they got an outdoor restaurant some of the buildings I wonder where is everybody I wonder why is everyone eating outdoors so it looks a bit cold <laughs> anyway you won't see it many people around in these shots guys hardly anyone you see a few ghosts but that's about it. it doesn't seem to be a population per se see the busy city streets oh there's a gentleman and a wife and the maid she got in the picture I say gentlemen, I don't really know. On here, let's have a look. And that same square, that outside restaurant thing on market stalls, flea market, if you like, because of French. Let's move on. Okay. A massive archage. Look at the size of it to these people. And why are they standing in front of it? The locking mechanism. Lion. Why? Uh, look at the railings. Why are they standing in front of that? Hmm. Like waiting for something to come out of there. All right, fair enough. Maybe. What's that place? Chocolate and confectionaries. Is it the queue for the sweet shop? Excuse me. Excuse me. <coughs> Let's have a look. Ok, 
crazy with the railings it's a tech isn't it so horse and car not much going on massively mud flooded and this is the side of something advertising though okay all right well i'll share that i'll link it up i'm not going to go through them all because uh you know, I've got to get on but oh let me have a look at that one that looks a bit fantastic this keeps happening every time i go to go the restaurant Oof. number 10 looks a bit snazzy okay all right then absolutely epic let's get back to my vloggage okay last night um i posted um my last post on Martinica channel a beautiful bit of piano music at the end with a bit of stone out that everybody seemed to have enjoyed so um, I posted the music the video they got the music from which shows an hour and a half of Piranesi um, engraving collections which I posted last night on the Celtic Tatarian channel this is also our channel if you don't know about it guys make sure to sub and make sure to watch that if it's fantastic and relaxing and a quality bit of stuff also if you don't know we have <clears throat> um, our website flatearthbritishinfo.com which will be linked below um, Martin uh, Leetka channel which posts um, Juicy on and the Think Tank channel for Think Tanking at 11,000 there okay guys so got a couple of images to show you at the end but now I'm going to show you a bit of footage okay which has got a bit of audio for 20 minutes or so what you got here guys is the impossible voyage now it's a remarkably early bit of film turn of the century and it shows um, trains uh, rockets and such okay it's very very early and it's been colorized so i'm going to share that with you now do enjoy it i will be back on screen um in a, in a second and i will be bringing some more snaps to you okay so make sure to share this out this is going to be enjoyable okay Movie time. Second, second thought, I don't think the audio will actually come out with my microphone plugged in. So let's just go through there. It's only cheesy audio anyway. Um, at the voyages. So I'm just having a little look together. We'll watch the whole 20 minutes because uh, i got to get on. So they have some strange sort of ideas of space travel. I posted on uh, this channel, um, no, on the Martin, on the Great... On the Flat Earth British Think Tank channel about three four years ago Voyage to the Moon a movie from um, 1902 and it's colorized and you can see where NASA got his crazy ideas from so these people are actually Victorians so it gives us an idea for the Italian world and tech because they show you tech Oh, I guess I should have put some music on. <laughs> so, trains. I'm not sure what's going on there. Freezer compartment. Yeah, it's all frozen. Uh, there's a bit of a story to it. So, please do share this out, guys, if you're in chat now. I can't imagine how many of you are there, but happy um, whatever day it is. Cause it doesn't really matter. Uh, keep your vibration up is all I can say um, in this epically weird fucking time. Oh right, just fought a load of people out of an ice block. Isn't that interesting? Bit of the Rip Van Winkles going on there. And where are they from? Right, they're Oriental. Or are they? That one is. No? Maybe that's how they've done like, you know, smuggling them in. The old days throws them in in ice blocks. Maybe they still do that in this day and age. Place is infinitely shit. Let's have a look. Alright. Oh, Are they on a different plane? Yes, it's a space rocket. They're on a different planet. Back up. So, let's have a look here. So, on the rocket. 
So they had quite fanciful thoughts back in the early eighteen, uh, early nineteen hundreds, didn't they? It's more of a submarine, actually, isn't it? If it's in water, because I wouldn't be able to move in space, would I? So it's more like it's in sea, because it's exactly like a submarine, actually. I think it's in the sea, isn't it? Except there's the moon, and there's clouds. All right, okay. Comes down on a parachute. Okay, where's it coming down to then? In the sea. Okay, now we got there. Hmm, let's see what happens in the sea. This is interesting. Oh, it's a submarine. Okay, so it flies and it's a submarine. Okay, I, I dig it. So check this out, guys. Where are they going to be going in their submarine? So a train plane thing rocket and submarine so what is that okay clever what they did with the side segments of the ship in the studio at this early period I'm guessing they didn't know about the extreme pressures oh watch out it's the giant octopus holy crap it's a kraken yeah, that'll save you. Just close the window. He won't attack you then. Okay, okay. Let's see where they end up, guys. I can't. Oh, it's not actually twenty minutes, is it? I think they might have a fire. Yes, I think they might have a fire. Curiouser and curiouser, said Alice. So, did you have a fantastic voyage? I bet you did. So, did we miss, miss a load out? I think we did. Oh, yeah, we missed a lot out. Oh, we missed a lot out. They had a train that went up a mountain. But don't worry, I'll link this up and we'll go through it again. Crazy train. Side segments. Let's have a look at this thing. Hmm. It just goes up and down valleys. Nice idea. It's Italian travel. <laughs> <gasps> oh. That looked quite real. Oh, they're all alright. That's a good thing. Only fell off a mountain or got killed. So, oh, pretty good film set. A bit like Cecil D. B. B. De Mill, only not. So, and a look at this air balloon in the air. Bits of Tataria going on there, guys. Also with the train itch. This looks exactly like Tataria. So, check out the balloon itch. Wow, fantasticus. Epic, epic, epic. Okay, get on with get on with the drama, get on with the juiceness. Wow, wow, already. So oh, we've seen that. All right, they go up. Oh, this is how they get about then. They go up. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's handy. That's handy, isn't it, guys? You can just take take off. Sky train, sky train. Cool. Hope Elon Musk doesn't ever watch this. You might make a sky train when it goes to space. It goes round and round, a bit like a car in space. Remember that? No, you forgot about it. It was in another reality. The same reality when he said he was going to go to the moon about two years ago on Mars. Remember that reality? No, probably don't. It was another reality. Not this one. Not this crazy, weird ass dimension. You're in. <sighs> Fuck. So, anyway, let's, let's get on a bit and have a look. Oh, the sun making an appearance. The sun has got his hat on. Oh, they had a bit of a disaster going on. 
and landed in that place so we got to the end okay excuse me for messing that up being busy oblivion so in the day of judgment funny every single culture and civilization will concentrate on this judgment day sort of scenario isn't it for the sins but you know, I don't think people can be blamed for the, you know, the back of sight mindset or the fucking thing that's going on with our psyche at all. And the magic spell and everything else. It's just becoming aware. As soon as everyone wakes up, it'll be different. Got to keep pushing. Time is very limited. People need to make a stand before it's too late. It's not too late, by the way. I feel. Not yet. So, I've got some images to show you here I've been uh, collecting for today. Just uh, some thoughts. Mandela effect, they say Rodan has his head on his hand, but Jimmy Savile, um, excuse me, Jimmy Savile, another one from the BBC, um, Brucey, which I actually think was probably not Pete, though. I'm not sure, though, because he, he went out with Anthea Redman. Um, he's um, got his hand on his chin. But that does look like Brucey Bonus, doesn't it? Except his body. So is that Rodan's thinker? Did he have his hand on his chin or his head? Let me know in comments. I'm very confused about the whole thing. This is the roof of the post office in Dublin in the Rebellion. Um, in the First World War, or around the same time. It was 1915. Um, and the um, boys were held up in this Greco-Romano post office um, while the British Army shot shells into there and blowing each uh, block up as they went. But the, the, the rebels, they had a pretty good stand against them, the Phoenicians. We always get pushed with Nefertiti's face, doesn't, don't we? She's definitely a Phoenician. She hasn't got that gap in the thing that they give her us when we're born. Um, but she's got this massive thing on her head. I think she might be a cone head, you know, or nephew. Uh, I think Scientific America are trying to put you off of air travel in uh, New York, August 16th, 1912, 13, excuse me, edition. Don't travel, they're really hazardous. Uh, and then a Hindenburg happens years later, definitely putting us off the most safest mode of transport. Well, no, um, this is. Ooh, I can't. Ooh, la, I can't remember the proper name. You will tell me, I guess, in comments for Ayers Rock in Oz. How is it when it looks like a giant's face laying down? And you got the forehead, the eye, the nose, the mouth, and the chin. It looks like half his half his face is buried and he's fallen over. The giant, jointage. So um, yeah, maybe it's just a cool catching of the shadows. Uh, but in that case. Um, it looks like a giant's face. Isn't it funny in the film, Doctor Strange, okay, where he, when he uses magic, he uses or conjures up sacred geometry and he uses Solomon's sigils all in a circle. They're actually showing you the Solomon's sigils, the impact on consciousness, if you like, and geometry. That is their magic. <laughs> Um, and they are jet, jet trains. I'm, I'm guessing that this didn't really catch on because it had jet power and it probably went like too fast. But maybe they did catch on. But I've never seen one before, have you? No, 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 me. This is New York, Fifth Avenue, back in the days of what they called the Gilded Era or the days of Tataria. All these mansions bought up by oligarchs like the Van der Blitz or the Astors. But they're all old world, mud flooded. This window here is below that ground level. See the top of one, this high. Fifth Avenue, place for elites. Super fantastica image. Federal Square Chambers, Christchurch. Bottoms of tops of windows in Christchurch. Which had an unfortunate earthquake thing happen, isn't it? And a lot of his Tatarian buildings decide to crumble. So I wonder where this building is and what they're waiting there for in the muddy streets. It's got cobble there. Um, 
So I'll grit there and merge here. And only mud. And that giant freaking building. Which everyone's queuing outside. So it's, it's a hotel. It's a hotel. I get it. It's a hotel. It is. It is. Why is it that there's so many major hotels built in the center of these Italian cities? You know, the populations can't, you know, reflect these. So I'm thinking that these places is where you were a rival, like all of them, like seem to be arrivals maybe, and men, and they get to stay in the hotel. So I think these hotels, you know, repurposed Italian buildings, put into lodges or hotels, if you like, for new arrivals. Or this monk. He lived 185 years. One science claims the oldest person ever was a woman who lived 122 years, but Shima Tapsviriji, can't even say that, lived for 185 years. He walked a spiritual path and learned the secret, spiritual, secret spiritual and herbal formula that makes an old body young again. 185 guys need to get on for 200. Yeah, super fantastic. No wonder he's smiling. Yeah, I know. Never mud flooded city. Looks like they're just digging it out. Just mud. Tops of windows here. You know, in the mud. Do you think architecturally what would be the point? Because, you know, if it rains, all that's going to just fill up or flick against the window or. Makes no sense. Sol. Standing in water. What's happening below? If I was to hazard a guess, training or something. So I'm not sure if they actually used them. Um, they're mini helicopters. They would be fantastically dangerous, but excellent to go down, say, city street with. Check these out. This is a cover of an old uh, New Testament. The Bible's pure apocalyptic. It's an apocalyptic bookage. And I show you, like, reset. It's a Phoenician bookage. So, the scales for judgment. Okay. The old scaly uh, blast. Trees breaking. Plasma discharge, lightning, thunder, crashing trees, everyone falling. What about in the middle? In the cloud again is some information. Reset civilization, the tree. And somebody looks like Adam starting all over again. And the devil, the serpent, breathing the fires in. Hmm. This is also from that same book. For the New Testament. Or peoples of the world. Okay, we're moving on. So, not to alarm you, anybody, but Mad Max took place in 2021. So the nuclear war scenario for Mad Max happened in 2021. So, I have posted about this before, okay, on the Tatarian channel, and it is Blood Red Bricks channel, uh, on the Tatarian channels. You can watch that on there. But Cattle Blood is largely wasted that architectural Jack Monroe decided to put it some something eco-friendly out of it he created blood bricks a mix of cow's blood and water and sand and baked into waterproof brick and it works so well he believes that he will replace mud bricks in the areas that have dry climates now we also found evidence on the Italian channel that you know because there's blood in the bricks that would it be a great jump of the imagination to have the blood of the Tartars or blood put into bricks and this is why all of the bricks are Red. So on my last post on my Liga channel, I showed um, Star Forts. I hope you enjoyed my Star Forts post. Seems to have had a good reception. Uh, thank you for that. Um, and I show a map of all Star Forts laid out on a Mercator, standard Mercator projection map. And I said, wouldn't it be interesting if uh, we could get this on a, an AE perspective map? an AE projection which somebody sent me straight away the next morning in the comments I'm having a brain fart I'll thank you your name but I really do thank you um, see if you could tell us anything do you think you can except for the massive amount in Europe and the east coast of America um, hmm. it's pretty cumbersome 
there's a star for out there in the Pacific. They say Australia hasn't got any in New Zealand, but I know they have. So thank you for that. It's really interesting. A beautiful little map as well. So I'm gonna pop back for a minute because I'm gonna be going very, very shortly. Oh, on camera. That's me, Martin Vika. Okay, flat with British, fat thumbs to all. Uh, thanks for this week, and I will be back on Martinica channel, or if anything else comes to mind very, very, very soon. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. We're going to look at comets, the effect on atmosphere, some good depictions, and wondering what is going on. Okay, because something is definitely on the way. Wouldn't you agree? Hmm? Anyway, peace and love to you all, guys. See you soon. I'll do anything I wouldn't do.